I was a really lucky kid. Grew up about 10 minutes from the National Institutes of Health in Bethesda. And so I got to do three summers of research there uh, in high school. And I had this great mentor. He gave me a project that was difficult um, and that had no guarantee of success, and nor did I successfully complete it. But I learned some things during the experience. I learned how to plan experiments. I learned how to evaluate data. I learned how to collaborate. I learned how to communicate. I learned how to fail. And more importantly, I learned how to recover from those failures. I learned how to troubleshoot. Collectively, I would argue that I learned the experience of inquiry. Now, we teach this most effectively in grad schools where students learn it by actually doing science. I don't think you need to go to grad school to learn something true and important about the experience of inquiry. I think you can do it online, and I think you can do it through video. So in research universities, the sort of product of the scientific method is a research article, which is the cynics will call it a minimum publishable unit. Um, but I won't get too far into that. Um, so my first experiment with teaching the experience of inquiry online was to take a research article published in 1977 by my then advisor here at MIT, Professor John Essigman, and totally deconstruct it. So this is the result. It's called Open Labware. The name is, of course, a ripoff of Open Courseware. You can read the paper. You can read an introduction to the work. You can read all 204 pages of John Essigman's lab notebook. You can watch video interviews with John and the other key players. And it's all organized here on the timeline which is just like Facebook's version, except that ours has useful information. <laughs> um, this is great, but it is a lot of material, and it takes a long time to dig through it and glean something from it. So after graduating, I thought, OK, I'm going to try something a little bit more concise. So I went into TV. This is Alton Brown. He's the writer, director, and star of a fantastic Food Network show called Good Eats. And that's me. I was the junior production assistant and occasional founding father. I think I also played John Adams a couple of times, which is oh, what fun. Um, but TV has two advantages. First, uh, you can reach a lot more people. That's obvious. The second thing is that because you have to be short and concise, you're forced to focus your message and think about what's actually important. And that's great. The disadvantage to, to these kinds of visual media, especially when you're talking about science, is that there's a tendency to oversimplify. Uh, and so you take a long and convoluted story with many false starts and you know topsy-turvy route roller coaster, and you turn it into this sort of flat series of logical events that, as you're reading it or watching it, seem sort of preordained. Like, how could it possibly have happened any other way? Despite that disadvantage, I still think it's possible to teach this experience of inquiry online through video. So in 2010, I started a production company. And through free energy, I've been able to work on some very, very cool projects. And I want to tell you about one of them right now. Um, about a year ago, John Essigman, the same one that I deconstructed this paper, called me and said, we've got this outreach money. And we're not exactly sure what to do with it. And I'm like, OK, this conversation is going well so far. Um, we're looking to do something about a freshman chemistry lab course. And we're thinking either a documentary or a reality show. And I thought, great. I would love to come to MIT and help make the Charles River Shore. Um, <clears throat> seriously, though, this is actually what we did create. It's a reality show about uh, 5301, which is a class that's taught every January here at MIT. And I want to share a teaching moment uh, from the course. So this is Anthony. Anthony is doing an extraction, which is a chemical process that separates two compounds. The last step in the extraction, oh, I'm sorry, I should mention, it's Anthony's first ever extraction and second day in the lab. So the last step in the process is to evaporate off all the solvent. And hopefully, you end up with this sort of pure white crystalline solid. But of course, what Anthony ends up with is an oily liquid. So he thinks he's failed. And he goes to his TA and he says, oh my god, I failed. Help, help, help. What do I do? I, I just I'm, I got to start over. It's been four hours. I don't know. And she goes, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your roll. Who's to say what you're supposed to get? In other words, before you jump into any conclusions, You've got to test that and see what it actually is. And if it's not what you think it is, what is it? And why is it that thing that you, you know, got? So I think in that moment, oh, by the way, um, he actually ended up getting what he thought he was supposed to get. It just came out in a different form. And that sometimes happens in organic reactions. But that 
I think teaches something valuable. It teaches don't let preconceived notions of what's supposed to happen influence your thinking, especially as you're doing an experiment. It teaches you not to give up too early, which is important in science, as anyone with a PhD will know. Um, it teaches you that looks don't really matter in chemistry. It doesn't matter what the thing looks like. It matters what it is. And it also teaches you the most important thing is that I think writing a chemical reaction down on paper and actually stepping into a lab and doing it are two completely different things. And the latter takes a lot more thought, time, and energy. So what I just showed you, that's where I think online educational video is going and should go. Much less of uh, lectures on tape and much more of a story, a story that grabs you and then uses that narrative to teach you something fundamental, something important, and something true about the experience of inquiry and therefore the process of science. Thank you.